Hello class, um, I am here in the Robinson Creek, uh, Robinson Lake drainage, which is uh, a drainage which goes out of Onion Valley um, up into the Sierra um, near the town of Independence um, in the Owens Valley. And you can see Robinson Lake over there. And as we look over here, this is one of my best friends in the world, uh, Patrick Rizzo. Uh, Patrick is a uh, off and on again, off again park ranger. He's currently working Yosemite as a climbing steward, and he but he was trained as a forester. And we were just um, tripping out on the trees that are here. So Patrick, real quickly, tell us about these trees. So cool. We're in the subalpine forest here in the Sierra Nevada. Subalpine means that these trees are. Um, up high, they actually grow pretty much to the alpine line, which is the line in the mountains where trees don't grow anymore. And the mountains start to get more of like a desert. Um, so what, ki what kind of tree is this? So these are foxtail pine trees. They're really, really cool. A um, couple amazing things about them. They're uh, a white pine and they only grow in a small area in the Sierra. They grow in Sequoia National Park and a part of Kings Canyon National Park and the adjacent national forest to it. Um, Briscoe pines are rare and old. Wait, these are foxtail pines. Excuse me, foxtail pines. The, yes. The reason I mentioned Briscoe pines is what's really cool about these trees is they're related to Briscoe pines. Briscoe pines are the oldest living thing above ground. Um, the oldest living organic thing in the natural world that we know of. What's really cool about Prisicone Pines is they grow right over there. We can't see it because today's a little smoky. There are a lot Smoked of fires out. in California, but uh, literally across the Owens Valley and up the White Mountains are some of the oldest Prisicone Pines on earth. One of them growing 5,000 years old. So are there any uh, bristle cones in the Sierra? There are no bristle cones in the Sierra. Cool. Right on. So, uh, and, and, and are there any reasons for why that's the case, given that they exist like both in the mountain range right across the way and all through this, all through the, uh, the, 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 the mountain ranges of Nevada? I have a feeling that you're going to be able to explain that. But what, <laughs> what, what is really cool um, is that recently they were doing genetic tests on these foxtail pines. And they found out that they are pretty much ex identical to the bristlecone pines. They are identical genetically, maybe off by one bit, but uh, they look the same when they grow. Um, and they have the same exact foliage patterns, uh, the same ne needle bunching. They are the bristlecone of the Sierra, but they're not bristlecones and they don't grow that old. Yeah, so, so here's why they're different. And uh, here, Patrick, could you hold, the, oh, hold yeah. the camera? So if we check out the rock that's right down here, here we go. This right here, this is the rock of the Sierra Nevada. Granitic rock, granite. Basically the continental crust. As we talked about last week when we were dealing with plate tectonics, right? We're like, this here, this makes up all of the continents, right? Well, granite is rich in, is rich in all of these different minerals like quartz and feldspar and so on, which are, of course, rich in their respective elements, right? One of the elements that granite tends to be really deficient in is magnesium. Now, where all the bristlecone pines are, you know, in those mountain ranges right across the way over there, they're rich in the, 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 the bedrock there is rich in a rock type called dolomite. Dolomite is really rich in this magnesium rich mineral, uh, in a series of magnesium rich minerals. And so that's why we can have that one species of tree, the bristlecone pine, the oldest on earth, right across the way over there, but not over here. Because that mineral doesn't exist here. So when I think about how mineralogy impacts the earth system, and your lives and all that stuff, you know, it's way more to me than just like, hey, we need minerals. Like, hey, look at my phone here, it's made of minerals. Like, it's like, it's like the minerals not make the shape of the land, they make the plants that live on the land, they, and, and, and they're kind of like the bedrock of this whole integrative earth system that we're a part of. So, thank you, minerals. And thank you, Patrick. <laughs> You're welcome, nice to meet you, class. <laughs>